This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Hey there, it's Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more. And yes, I went to go get something to drink because I'm thirsty and it's hot. It's 100 degrees in the valley and I'm inside and the air conditioning is on and it doesn't even matter. It's still hot. But here's the thing. We normally do our show on Tuesday. We had a showcase last night, but we have to do it tonight on a Wednesday. So this is going to be actually exciting because you know what? We have a hot, angry mom and we have a Livy D on. So just those two things like that is kind of funny. So here we are, not Tuesday, Wednesday, streaming worldwide on Talk4 Media TV Radio Podcasting, K4HD Radio and Podcasting, and streaming on I2247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, with 7,400,000 and climbing numbers right now. 18 million views overall right now. Our old number of 15 is old now. We just haven't had a chance to change it with everything going on. And I really like the fact that this is always about women. It's always about promoting brands, companies, female-driven things. Whether you're a singer, songwriter, actor, producer, director, it doesn't matter. It's about seeing and giving voice to the voiceless, especially when you're a hot, angry mom, right? So, Mel, let's talk about this. You started to talk about yourself before we started. I said, wait, we haven't started yet. Now that we're started, now you can talk about yourself. Go ahead. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Mel House. I use she for pronouns. I am the writer, creator, executive producer, and I play the mom in a comedy series called Hot Angry Mom. It's a punk rock comedy about a people pleasing mom who has to face her rage when a video of her having an epic meltdown goes viral. Um, we recently played at Dance to the Films in LA and we're excited to come back to LA again uh, to uh, screen at Holly Shorts on August the 16th. So when it comes to that, uh, well, I would say that actress uh, that director, that screenwriter, uh, that voiceover. So this is kind of almost a pilot in a way, too. And and she did one of the smart things that I like. It's always yeah. about showing the one sheet. See, I tell directors, filmmakers all the time, always have your one sheet because I will take this with me cross country no matter where we go. And I always say this, when you email me, you, everybody out there, put your phone number down so I can call you. I like to walk and talk while I'm getting things done. So I had to reach out to Mel because I saw her on a, on a green carpet. I'm like, well, who's this? I didn't know she was a hot, angry mom then, but she was a, she was a hot, angry melt then. Uh, but it was one of those things. She's interesting. She, has, she was there promoting something, and I like what she had. And that's what I like when it comes to movie reviews and more. It's about finding those people and giving them a voice so they can talk about the things, right, Livy? Because everybody's got something. Look at her. She's in Virginia. She's in her barn. She doesn't realize I come from the world of dressage, so I know about horses too. So, all right, so Livy, let's talk about this. Let's talk about your music, first of all. And you do some funny things. Now I know why you do some funny things, because you're in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I think it's it's more so the horse person thing, but definitely uh, being a horse person, you you got to be a little weird to interact with thousand pound animals. Uh, it's got to be a little weird. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I would say unique because um, when I first had our our horse ranch, um, we were boarding. We, we took in trouble horses. I didn't know that. Uh, you know, after three years old, you know thoroughbreds were put out the pasture and I was like well how is that I didn't know anything about horses but I learned a lot by trouble horses I love the fact and I talk about it all on the show all the time that horses love kids that are artistic that's one of the things that I really like to do 
I like to bring those people together who might have mental problems or uh, disabilities or anything like that and find out what makes them ticks and what will make them happy. So when it comes to like a hot angry mom, comedy and something like that, or bringing, being around horses or even singing, these are the things that bring out the best in people and people like that. If you, if you, if you put headphones on someone who's autistic, they start humming. They're in their whole little world and it's fascinating to watch which goes back to you being that singer. Talk about how you started and what are you doing today? Because your stuff is kind of funny. I like it. Thank you. Yeah, so I've been into music my whole life. I've played the flute, the guitar, um, and I've always really sang and rapped. But when I got the opportunity uh, to produce music with NI Music Group, I just couldn't pass it up. And now I have three songs out. I have a few more that are being recorded, and I'm excited to show them all. See, I'm excited that you're excited. All right, talk about this barn, first of all. It's, I like that wood one. That's really classic of that. And what's the what's your horse? Is it a mare? I have four horses. So of I course have, you do. Yes, I have three mares and a gelding. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. So the fact is, is so... So Mel, this is important because it's always about the arts, and I and I don't like when schools take the arts away because I was that drummer. I marched in a drum and bugle corps, which is my favorite love. And so we went to the marching band. You think of like a drum line? Well, drum and bugle corps is steroids, a drum line. So in that lot, those drummers, I always say us drummers, we bang harder. We bang on anything that we can get our hands on. But it's always about rehearsing and stuff like that. But Mel, when it comes to your film, in comedy a lot of it goes into improv right and when you've written that 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 fine piece of writing that's on that paper and then you can improvise on that that's classic too because i didn't know if you were reading from the script or if you were just going with it actually it was all script but it was inspired by real life so the show is inspired by my real life family and my own journey to renegotiate my relationship with anger because like a lot of people growing up, I was taught that anger was bad. And so I just sort of swallowed it, put on a, a great big smile. But if you don't actually listen to your anger, it's gonna find a way out anyway, in ways that you know are actually maybe not so healthy for yourself and other people. And so um, as a parent, and I'm sure so many parents out there can relate, particularly during the pandemic, when you're trapped in small spaces, trying to do a job, trying to manage multiple kids, uh, you know, I think it was a really challenging situation for a lot of people, and we're all human. Um, I think women particularly have been enculturated not to be in touch with our anger, to be taught it's destructive and ugly. And um, the, the series actually starts the day after the Blasey Ford testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, and what so many women in the country watched was a woman giving credible testimony about potentially being sexually assaulted and a man raging about his name being questioned. And I think for a lot of women, just seeing that um, and beginning to talk about and feel so much rage because it was at the same time that Me Too was exploding and there was all kinds of things going on in the world that people were justifiably feeling frustrated or angry about. And so for me, who've been taught anger is bad, well, actually, there's a place for it. There, there's such a thing as positive anger. And so I needed to figure out, well, what is it? So I started by creating a character called Hot Angry Mom and doing stand-up around New York City. And I found that everyone has a lot of rage, whether you're a woman, whether you're a mom. Uh, and so I really wanted us to talk about, like, what is it like to, to listen to your anger and to see it actually as a source of power? And then to use it in a way that you connect with other people to transform it for positive change. And, and what does that look like? And the only way to really talk about something like female rage is to make comedy about it, to make it palatable. So there's so many things that happened in my real life that inspired, uh, for instance, um, my husband took the bathroom door off <laughs> because I'm afraid to get trapped in small spaces. And our hinge broke, so he took it off. And then we didn't have a bathroom door for more than three months. Uh, and when one of my friends who was very pregnant came over and I had to be like, use the bathroom and we'll, we'll just all stay over here. Like, don't mind us. I was like, all right, something has to fucking change. Uh, so when we, when I started the pilot, my husband was like, oh, you should put that in your story. And we opened with this scene in like at six in the morning where mom's trying to go to the bathroom and everyone in the file family piles in and the bathroom door is missing. And she's like, what is going on? Because there's that sort of chaos and comedy that just launches our story right into a lot of action. 
Hey, Rebel, if we have her, uh, her trailer ready, let's show that because that's actually a funny scene in there. But it's also people can really relate to that. And, you know, when I'm when I'm staying at my friend's house uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm just I'm watching families and what they have to go through. I'm like, well, this is funny. If I was a screenwriter, I would write something like that. So that scene was funny to me. And I really enjoyed that. So this is uh, this might be your trailer from Hot Angry Mom. Yep. Damn. Come on, smile, girl. Can't be that bad. Once you're a mother, you'll never pee alone again. <laughs> Dear God, Dice, Goddess, if you help me get this, I will give half my paycheck to charity. I'll stop cursing, masturbating. What is going on today? Can I get the bedroom to work on this? Z's working on this history project. <laughs> No one hears me unless I get angry. The bathroom door is missing. Fuck any fuck! 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 Fuck this! <laughs> I'm on some robo spam sex list. Why? <laughs> That's kind of sweet. Children are filming my ass. Don't judge me. My son forgot his history project. I don't know what y'all are staring at, but I can wear whatever the fuck I want. It's a, it's a costume work thing. Oh, uh, I'm an actor. You're gonna go in there, and you're gonna be like, bam, who's nice? Sorry, I moved my car over there to let traffic get by. I have $10, no five in the car. I know it's not enough for parking, but please. I have such an anger problem. I don't have an anger problem. That video? Hey, fucker, I know you saw me there. Get your car out of my spot before I take my keys and blow my dick on your car. If you two can't get along, I'm taking the gun away. Two million views. That's a lot of people. You are magic. Ow! You are powerful. That's it, I'm sorry. And I'm a goddess. And you don't fuck with the goddess. I'm a powerful goddess. Fucked up. Well, it's, it's really interesting when it comes to stuff like that. I always say when it comes to singers, a lot of the hits are from tragedy or sorrow or a loss or something like that. You know, when you can have that hot, angry mom, and then you could turn around and do something like that. When it comes to singing, you do the same thing, right? How do you write? How do you perform? And when you're not feeling well, it's called the show still must go on, right? Definitely. Uh, I'm sure, Mel, you can understand. Also, I love... I loved your pilot episode that I'm definitely going to watch because that was amazing. But um, definitely, I think I get a lot of my inspiration from some of the traumatic or um, just un uncomfortable situations that happened in my life. And I think that passion really can serve in my music and when I'm performing. I hope people can see that. That's really good. I like the fact that you were a flute player. I think that's a lost art. I like anybody who's in a band. I don't care if you're in a marching band or a rock and roll band. Um, I think of, uh, you know, Pink Floyd or, um, you know, Jethro Tull. You know, when you you can have the sleep. I mean, I, I, I talk to rappers because you're a rapper too. How many instruments do you play? This is what I tell them. They go, I don't play any. I'm like, well, why not? Prince learned 23 and he was good at all 23. So if he could do that, why don't you do that? So now, and, and Mel, you know this, you have to learn multiple things to be good at what you're doing. So I was a drummer. I did everything but play drum set, believe it or not. So percussion, timpani, I marched with all of that stuff. And we had straps and not braces. Played triples, quads, all of that stuff. So, but you're always supposed to be learning. So when it comes to your voice, Livy, how do you keep your voice in shape? Are you singing to your horse? Because I'd like to know that one too. Yes, I practice all the time. I find myself like consciously and unconsciously practicing just sometimes I'll be singing in the shower and I'm like mm, I need more diaphragm breath um but a lot of the I work on my breathing a lot uh every day working on getting that big breath getting all the air and the flute definitely helped me with get that concept once mm -hmm. I started rapping I think playing the flute when I was younger really helped with that what got you into being a rapper how did that happen it, I've always... What, the mean streets of Virginia? Right, yes. <laughs> Out on the farm. Um, but I think just over time, I always love to make up my own 
songs to words and I would do it uh, just in different voices, different interpretations. And I found I really like making rap songs. And so it just kind of came about like that. Favorite rappers, who are you? Mine are minus Eminem, right off the bat. Anytime you could do something like that. And I have to go back old school, Mel. I have to go back to MC Hammer because I loved how he danced. Yes. Uh, okay. Over the top, I would say my workout playlist this morning was Eminem, 50 Cent, um, Busta Rhyme, hmm. and I had to throw the baby in there because I had to have some new school. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Mel, talk about putting that trailer together. Not easy to put. You have to always put like two different uh, versions of things here because you don't want to insult certain people. But I like this version, obviously. So talk about making that decision because you can't air that on network TV, but that, that gives a lot to the character that you created. Yes. Yeah, so um, the, the entire series was edited by Jessica Alexander Green. So I just want to give a little shout out to our editor. Um, however, we hired a different person to do just the trailer who focuses on being a trailer editor because it's a different skill set. Um, so we mm -hmm. uh, hired Amy Kirsten, who's out of LA, um, and she did a, like an almost two minute trailer, which I absolutely loved. She was so good at structuring it and taking so much of what we had worked on um, and being able to get it into quick sound bites uh, in the trailer. And then when we were accepted into Dances with Films, they said, we need a 90 second trailer that's clean. And then I was like, oh, our trailer's fine. And then I listened, it was like every other <laughs> fourth word was a curse word. And I was like, oh, okay. Hmm. So we decided to beat out the curse words. However, we did leave the animated dick pic and you do hear the word dick uh, when I'm in, and that's a fantasy rage sequence, by the way, inspired by a real uh, New York City road rage moment that I had where I really scared myself. But it goes into that character and it goes into the movie. It's part of that. So to me, it makes sense and I get it. And that's one reason why I liked it because all my female friends, Terry, who's not on here, she's a hot, angry, she's not a mom, but she's a, she's an angry <laughs> girl, you know, with all the stuff that goes on. But all my female friends have got something going on and man. And for, I think I, for a lot of us, yeah. it may live in a fantasy realm because that's actually the safe thing to do with it because expressing your anger is not actually always the safe thing to do in our world. And so I think we all learn different strategies about, about it. And I, I think the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway through this whole process, besides being able to take what I was feeling and turn it into a piece of art and a story that is really resonating with audiences, is just to give myself the space to pause, to really honor my anger, to realize like, oh, it's righteous. Like anger is a protective emotion that is letting you know your boundaries are being crossed or something unjust is happening here. And just to make enough space to become aware of it and then a little, and then maybe more space to figure out, well, now what do I do with it? But actually allowing yourself to fully feel it and embrace it, not to lash out aggressively at other people necessarily, well then sometimes maybe some people deserve it or have earned it, but for the most part to then figure out like, what do I want to do about this so that I don't swallow it. I don't sit on it. I don't make myself sick with it. I don't harm myself with my anger, but I actually figure about how, how to make the changes that I need to make or who I need to help me, you know, do those kinds of things. Um, and so I, I think women actually need permission to feel their anger. And what I get every time this is screened, I've had a group of women come up to me and be like, oh my God, watching you express this rage is so satisfying. And it's like, oh, now I have a little more permission to be a little more whole and more of who I already am. Um, and then moms come up to me and start telling me stories about how much they beat their kids, which is so bad. <laughs> Obviously we all love our kids, but there is a lot of frustration and there's maybe not a lot of space just to go, you know, motherhood really sucks sometimes. It's unpaid labor, it's invisible labor. You might sacrifice your career potential, your wealth. There's so many different things that, you know, go on that women and mothers are juggling. And there's just sort of this cultural image of like, it's supposed to be so wonderful and happy. And, and there's a lot of pressures around it. And so uh, making space for people to tell their stories and be heard and seen is what art is about. And I'm so happy that my series is just beginning that journey. Well, Livy, you're a mom too, to your horses. So to, to talk about that, because can you sing angry or you have to like walk around and, and stuff? Because some people, I think of like a Janis Joplin when 
she'd be drunk or whatever. I mean, she could just belt out stuff, but could she sing straight? Probably not. So with my, I prefer to like take a breath and sing calm. Um, honestly, when I first started recording, I would get so excited. My voice would get super loud. And then the, uh, the microphone was picking that up. And so it sounded really loud. So that was something I had to navigate when I got into a professional studio that like, I don't need to yell into the microphone. It's going to receive everything I'm saying. You know, that makes sense. And, and you were talking about using a diaphragm. So uh, Mel will understand this. So for voiceover people and disc jockeys, not the same world, two different, two different worlds. And I had to learn to use my diaphragm because I would talk nasally. And I didn't know that in Connecticut until I went to California. And I said, oh, you, you talk nasally, you sound white. Um, and then they go, you have to find someone that you can kind of mimic. So eventually I found... Um, what is his face from Star Trek? His name will come to me in a little bit. Um, but I would go on 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 a tour with um, Don LaFontaine. If you know who he was, he used to do all the trailers. He was known as the Voice. One take, Don. He had a professional uh, limousine driver because he'd go in, do one take, and he was gone. But he had 15 jobs every day, Monday through Friday, and he would only watch two or three movies a day because he saw all the trailers. But he would read like 250 books because and do New York Times uh, crossword puzzles. That was like his ritual, and it was like an honor to see that. And that made me study the craft a lot more. So, Mel, you being that voice teacher, that, that makes me appreciate those things because people need to pick up these things. And it's like it is a trade. And voiceover work, you could do it till the day you die. And a lot of people need to know more of that. You lose your voice singing, but you know what? You could still act it out, still be that character. And for singing, I couldn't sing to save my life because here's my thing. My favorite song is Ain't Talking About Love by Van Halen. Don Levy, I don't know if you know about Van Halen or whatever, but that's my angry guy song. <laughs> Ain't Talking About Love. So, you know, when I'm talking to David Lee Roth and, and when Eddie was alive, I'm like, you need to write another song like this because this is what everybody got. It ain't talking about love. That's what I say, you know. Hmm. All right, favorite songs, Livy. What's your favorite songs? Well, of course, mine. Take a number. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but right now, I love the new Barbie song uh, by what is it, Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj. That song I love. The whole soundtrack of the movie, I love. I gotta see that. I I heard a song by uh, uh, what is her name, Tanner or something. She's a country performer. And I'd never heard it before, and all of a sudden it was a, uh, it was um, country Barbie or something like that, and it came up like on YouTube, like one of the commercials, and I'm like, this is kind of catchy. And then I started seeing a bunch of her other stuff. I'm like, I like her, and it turns out I didn't know she was a black country singer. And I'm like, oh, I like her stuff all of a sudden. So that's what I like about YouTube, and that's what I like about Pandora. I'm not a Spotify or an iTunes type of guy. I, I like this stuff. Mel, when it comes to when you're writing. Or when you just need to go, because you're a hot, angry mom at that point, you need to go for a ride. What are you listening to in your car? Um, okay. I listen As to you're screaming at other people. <laughs> I listen to a lot of NPR, actually. That's like how I get my news when I drive. And actually, even though I'm a New Yorker, I drive. Um, I did do a feature film last fall, and I got to play a character who had a scene where I was uh, listening to metal and rage eating candy bars while driving and that was maybe one of the most fun scenes I've ever filmed because I was just piling in all the mini candy bars and the director was a little worried about me. She said, you don't have to eat anymore. I was like, ah, <laughs> just like shoving them in the face. And so I didn't, I've, I've never been, a, I wasn't a fan of metal growing up, but I saw um, a documentary called Slave to Sirens mm -hmm. um, about this Middle Eastern all-female punk me or metal group. Yeah, they were actually very good. I saw that doc. I, yeah, I absolutely loved it. And so I started to kind of listen to them right before I did this film, uh, which sort of fed that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm from Baltimore, so uh, 90s hip hop R&B, um, the music of my youth. Um, yeah, and I, I guess I like a lot of solo artists. So like Erica Badu is something I was jamming to recently. Um, 
Let me talk about this. You're such a, a beautiful girl. There we go. You know, on take a number. Talk about this. What does that What does that mean to you when you see that? Uh, it just uh, it makes me so happy. I always wanted. This is what I always wanted. I always wanted to be a musician. I always wanted to be on like the cover of a magazine, and just to see it happening is crazy. I it makes me so happy. And honestly, I look back and my younger self would have been so happy. Like looking at me now, my younger self would have thought I was the coolest thing ever. Uh, so it's just really, I love where I come from and being shy and not really talking to many people to now my job is to be social and <laughs> perform in front of people. So it's just really cool. Talk about when you shot that cover. What was that like for you? Yes. Yeah, so the first one we shot in a studio in downtown LA and that was super fun. And we had, we had two pythons. And they're there for my music video free show, which comes out in October. And I'm so excited for that. It is that song. I love that song so much. Uh, but we had these uh, pythons and they were like crawling all over me. It was just awesome. And then the second one was on Rodeo Drive. We got up at like 5 a.m. and we went, uh, and we got out there by six and like the sun was just coming up and we were taking pictures on Rodeo and that was super fun as well. That's a great, that's a, you know, I call that a Comac, Kodak moment. And it was just, that's a great time to be there, believe it or not. So I, I've been there at that point, so I know what that's like. And Mel, you, you missed the Python. So in part two, Hot Angry Mom, again, that's what I'm calling your title, Hot Angry Mom, again. You're going to have to have a Python in there. <laughs> you know, my, my connection to Pythons, the very first job I ever had was at the Maryland Science Center when I was 15. And I used to do the stage shows, and we had this big 12-foot Python. I don't know if I'm really allowed to say his name, but I'm sure he's passed by now. This was 30 years ago. Uh, his name was Sid. He named the animals. Uh, and, and I used to like bring him out and do stage shows and teach people all about the animals and the various things. So that's my uh, my Python-y connection. That's I good. actually go to the, the Maryland Science Center. I've been there a few times. And I actually did, my first acting gig was a um, about Adam. So it was, that was like my first on this stage there. So that's so funny. Small world. And, and Dustin, right on time. Perfect. You couldn't have gotten any more perfect than this. All right. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about the way. Let's talk about nine day and where you're heading. Cause you're both heading to the same place, I believe. Hey, Brian, how are you? Um, Good. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate it. Uh, Day Nine just premiered at the LA Shorts Film Festival, um, and uh, it was a excellent premiere. A lot of people, great reception. Um, the way you mentioned my previous film before that, that's currently uh, streaming everywhere. You know, if you want to catch it on Prime, Vudu, YouTube, Apple, etc. So um, you know, and with Day Nine, you know, as we finish these. Um, screenings it will also become available online soon and i think this is the trailer for it yes let's yeah. take a look you still get paid whether we find it or not i get back to work what do you think it is we're digging for? That is worth a hundred million. Could be anything. Why are we doing this? I'm here to dig sand until he calls it quits. And at the end of the day, I'm the one signing your check. <laughs> you know, you could have left him up there to die. No one would have blamed you. You want to go quick? How about I put a bullet in the back of your head and leave you out here with the scorpions? We should have left three days ago. He's just tired. I own every single one of you. Now dig. Talk about this. I love this film. And it's it's Thanks. got, you know, you can't really say too much about it. But I felt hot watching it. That's how much <laughs> it, 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 it touched me. I was like, I felt like I was out there with them digging. 
Very much so. Uh, the the way I designed the uh, film was to give that sensation of being on the edge, and you know, very much experiencing what the characters are experiencing. Um, especially the environmental pressure, the situational pressure, and of course the uh, main antagonist who's pushing them to their limits. Now, the good thing about this, you, you know, you are that poet, and I wanted to definitely want to talk about that because we didn't get a chance to talk about it when he was on for the way. You're also award-winning. You're that writer, that director. Um, talk about those things. Those aren't easy to get. And I don't think the audience knows about it. I, I talked to someone else who wanted to do a, a, a documentary, and I saw it always takes about an average of seven years to do a documentary. You've got to raise the money. You might have to stop and start. You might lose someone. You're waiting for someone, and you've got to get the music in. And then by that time, time is going on. Yeah. You know? But a lot of people don't understand this. And, and, and Mel will know, understand this because I met at, at Dances with Films. I hadn't been there in a many, many years and it was the first time I've seen a lot of energy at a film festival in a long time. And I felt great being there to help these filmmakers out. And a lot of them were young. And I had met her on there. I said, I got to have you on a show. I hadn't even seen her film. And mm -hmm. then I saw your film. I'm like, there's some great work out there. And we need to support the artists even more, which is why I wanted to put everybody in. Because uh we're packed we're four months in advance i have no room i just happen to have no co-host today which doesn't bother me because you guys are here which is weird <laughs> and the, the, the phone calls will come in later i'm sorry i missed it because they never missed the show but this is great because it's not about us it's about you guys and that's why it's an honor to have you on just now, so let's start with you first because uh, if I remember correctly, did the way win 41 awards? Was it something sort of like that? Five, actually. Yeah. Talk about that. That's it's a lot. Five awards, 25 nominations, you know, if distribution, domestic, worldwide, with no name talent. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but it, it to, to from conception to finally, you know, bringing the film into the world, that was a three-year process. Um, that was my 10th film. Day 9 is my 11th film. Uh, I've been a filmmaker for 20 years. Before that, another decade, film and television, at film and television as an actor, also in the theater for a very, very long time. So, you know, as an artist, it's a life thing. I'm a lifer. And I don't have a, I don't put a, some kind of a time limit on it. It's just keeping the interest going. And as the um, skill set increases and the contacts and the connections and the potentialities and the recognition increases, what starts happening or what's happening for me is now I'm working on two, three projects simultaneously in different stages. Because understanding that, you know, bringing a film into the world, especially a feature, takes many years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes doing shorts as proof of concept. That day nine, you know, we're looking at also turning it into a feature. So you're hitting many, many different angles and different things at the, at the same time. And of course, the poetry, you know, I grew up with poetry. My father was a, a Rumi uh, translator. And as a child, he would make me memorize verses and verse version poetry. So that's really been something that's been innate in my life. And for years, I explored writing it and creating it. But I never really published anything specifically, maybe a few things in anthologies here and there. But I was always looking for an original voice. And finally, I came up with a new style of poetry uh, that really worked for me. And so I, with my first book, uh, 92, I put out uh, this new you know, system of poetry, and also 90 poems with it. So it's just a life's work. It's a way of living, Brian. And I'm sure, as you know, you know Livy, I'm sure you know, you know, you don't think about doing something else or ever retiring. This is it. This is really living your best life to, to be able to create and put the world. I mean, that's my person. See, and that's inspiring when it comes to that. Um, before I go to Livy and, and back to Mel again, talk about what film festivals, why and film festivals are important to you. The, the beauty about film festivals is that it's a wonderful place to create artistic expression that is non-mainstream and it's not bound by sales agents and distribution companies and things of that. It really allows you to explore and experiment uh, so much so in the uh, Maya Darren sense really the the amateur filmmaker is always right on edge of our creative 
industry, our creative art. And these, this is a place where you can do that. That's why the energy is always so interesting and exciting. I was, I just premiered at LA Shorts uh, on Tuesday, yesterday. Uh, and, you know, it was a block of nine films, nine short films. And they were all fantastic, you know, innovative, thoughtful, high risk, high concept, you know, and, and that's the beauty of the film festival experience is that you can really push the edge of our art uh, without really being bound by uh, the the commodity math. And, and give I you social media links for everybody. And then uh, Mel, jump in after that. Okay. Uh, Daston, Khalili, Instagram, Facebook, just my name. Okay, Mel. Uh, I'm Mel House NYC, and my project is at Hot Angry Mom, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Though we're not really using Twitter anymore, but I haven't totally deleted it yet. <laughs> and Libby. Hey, all. I'm Libby G. I'm a singer, songwriter, and rapper, and I have music. <laughs> Let me talk about this. Your music's not in any any films or anything yet, right? Not yet. But you would like to have it in films, right? I would love it. Films, commercials, come come for me. <laughs> so the the thing about that is, and and that's, it knows about this obviously, and so does Mel. It's not easy for those those independent filmmakers or whatever filmmakers to always get the rights to the music, and that that to me is always fascinating. But I did find a documentary. And I think it was called Copyright, and I've got to have him back on, where he has all the music rights because he met the guy that met this, that created this one algorithm that everybody can use. And his whole thing was just give credit to me. And the documentary was called Copyright, and I loved it. And I'm like, this is great for filmmakers. This will cut down, and and they'll say they'll have more money for to market their films. Uh, and I I never forgot that. I got to have him back on because uh, he loved being on a show, and I loved having him on having people say hey come here you can use this music for free and just acknowledge give thanks to where he, that's all he wants mel talk about this what does film festivals mean for you because that's where i found you i found yeah. you as that hot angry mom there who was just happy to be there it was your energy that made me come up to you because i'm always looking standing back looking at people I'm like okay how can i help this person and i hadn't seen your film so i didn't know and i took a chance um so for me the film festival circuit does give independent films a chance for a theatrical screening with a live audience um, because a lot of independent films are not going to get a theatrical release where they're going to get to go see their film in, in various kinds of theaters. And so for me, actually being able to sit in a room with other people and hear how it's landing on them and then for them to come up afterwards to talk to me like i mentioned all of the angry women and the moms who want to tell me how much they hate their kids you know just that it's resonating and when people want to tell you their own stories in response to a story that you shared you know that something is cooking but, but one other thing i also want to say about that is just um i shared my script uh, which is really a tv pilot with a friend of mine that works in a network She's like, I love this so much, but your character is an actress and no one wants to hear a story about an actress. The first thing you're gonna get from networks is we just don't care. Every filmmaker, artist, actress wants to create a story about themselves being an actor and we don't care and we're not interested. And so we just had a screening last week at the New York TV, uh, at the New York TV Festival. Uh, and it was right after the strike and we, um, the SAG-AFTRA strike began. Um, and we were allowed to premiere because we're a completely independent project that was made under the micro budget agreement. We used all SAG after actors. I am one, <laughs> wear my shirt. Um, uh, and so we had our union's permission. And because we were part of a festival that was not anything to do with AMPTP or any struck company, we were able to premiere. Um, but that part of my show hit me harder than it ever has because my character has this whole beautiful ragey speech where she says, I just want to do what I love and be treated with a little bit of respect. Like what I do has value, like I have value. And she's saying that as an actress trying to audition as a middle-aged woman in an industry where women start to disappear after a certain age. And I'm an artist who wants to keep creating for the rest of my life. And I might have to create my own things to ensure that I continue to make good art. 
And that's not because I'm not talented or skilled. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and a conservatory education. And I was on network TV this year and I'm about to go off and do a, like a regional theater play, you know, work. Um, but but it's a rea- it has been a reality with this industry. So independent film creates opportunities for people to tell their stories, to tell the passion projects, um, like Dustin is saying, that, that maybe people will think it aren't as commercial or aren't willing to take a risk on. Um, and I saw a story about someone everyone in the audience fucking cared about, even though that person was an actor. And now we have all of these actors and writers and creators saying, see our humanity pay us what we're worth so that we can earn a living wage to continue to do the thing that we love so much. We're not asking for like buku buckets. And I don't think people actually understand what we get paid or how we live or how much hustle we have to do just to get by. We're literally looking for fair wages so that we can do the work that we love. And that's then when it comes to this, you're in all of those worlds. Your, your history is fascinating. Not only from the Persian point of view, which is a rich history, just like I say Greeks, which I think were the two of the most fascinating histories that I've ever studied. But however, you, what you've done, that feature film, that short film, how you go back and forth, that's fascinating to me. It's almost like here's my one and here's one for the studios. But you don't really play that game. You're like, you're going to do what you want to do if I'm correct. Yes, that's right, Brian. I, you know, in my previous life when I was a film and television actor, I understood very clearly i came to understand very clearly that the machine requires what it requires and it understands it very well because you know there's a bottom line to be met uh and i have respect for that you know i don't i don't i don't uh hate it and i don't diss it that's just the nature of the industry but understanding that you know death that death is imminent uh and having gone through the life that i have I made a decision to develop and create my own content uh, and get it out into the world. And it was a step-by-step process, but uh, it it brought me tremendous pleasure. And of course, if I'm offered a gig, I'll take it, but I'm not seeking um, recognition in the mainstream business because being an international traveler and having experienced a lot of the world, in fact, uh, there is a global film industry and you can reach so many markets and so many things. So being an, I, I think of myself as an eternal student. And I said, why not? Why, why not? I can make it. I can get it out there. I can learn the ropes. I'll make mistakes. It's fine, you know, but just keep going. And, and that has been my process. And now 20 years later, I'm at a point where I pretty much can develop, execute, and deliver product, high quality, excellent content, what I want to do, enjoy the process, and get it out into the world. And that's a beautiful thing as long as I'm willing to stay humble and be cool with my lane. You know, if I'm working in a low-budget reality and being like, hey, I'm happy. I don't need $50 million, $100 million movie. That's cool. You know, I can go enjoy one, but um, I'm cool making indie film, and I have Final Cut. You know, so, so having ultra clarity on what I want... Uh, and how I want my work to be presented is the thing that made all the difference. Because once I got clear, then everything else fell away and the mission and the direction revealed itself. See, and I love that. That's what it's all about. And that's why I always say it's about showcasing those brands. How many women are out there? How many people of color are out there? This is me saying that as that person who's not that filmmaker, who's not that actor, and who might not be that director. My job is simply, give me the film. I'm a movie whore. Give me the film, I won't watch anything. You give me your song, I'll listen to it. Because I used to be that program director for, you know, top stations cross country, you know, before I started watching films. And then now, balancing all these things, being in the art world, being in the toy industry, you know, having international best-selling authors, going back to what Dustin said, being, having those filmmakers come back out and they have another project out there. And whether it's indie or short or feature, doesn't matter what people aren't doing now they're not going to the movies unfortunately so my job is to say i know but (laughs) but here's the thing they went to see barbie they went to see oppenheimer they went to see the sound of sun and they went to see spider-verse and super mario brothers but what about the other films that they weren't watching that's what i'm focusing on 
I want them to see the way. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you see it two years from now based on what your age is. I want you to go back and see classic films. Go see John Cassavetti's films. Go, you know, turn into you know, turn a classic movies film festival. I know what it's like to pick films to put it in the Hollywood Film Festival or um, Beloit, Beloit International Film Festival in Beloit, Wisconsin, or um, National Women Film and Television there. Um, they've got some great films that more people need to see. So I always say this, you need to go out to support those films and actually don't be afraid to go to the movie theaters and pay. I understand that some people don't want to go, but you know what? A lot of people have put a, hard, a lot of hard work into making films and that's what I'm looking at. So when I see that energy at film festivals and people say, oh, they didn't look at my film, you don't know how many films that were chosen for one. And I know what it's like to fight to have those films in there like a day nine or a hot angry mom. And that's why I have people on here like this. That's why I take the chance I have Olivia D on uh, with this because people will always remember that they came on movie reviews and more with 18 million views and counting and everybody's got another project coming up no matter when it will be and I want first dibs at them coming on the show so I can talk about it because like I said my end up gold is 102 million not 18 102 that's my end goal so Dawson's got something he could come on anytime you want hot angry mom again that'll be your second title you're coming back for that Livy you're gonna always have a song because you're gonna be singing about your horses next most likely right Yes, sir. <laughs> Talk about this. We got about four minutes left. What do you want people to know about you and what uh, Gucci Down? Talk about that song real quick. Gucci Down is a bad and bougie, just confident song and fun. It's a little slower for the summer. Uh, just chilling by the pool, something to sing about. And I also have a song coming out, or another song that came out, uh, Take a Number, the remix, came out last Friday. Um, and that's a remix and you kind of have the man's perspective of if it, my song's about a bad date I went on so having the oh, male oh. perspective of the bad date uh, so that came out Friday and on August 18th I have a song called I'm a Catch coming out which is going to be super fun the music video's on a boat and I can't wait for y'all to hear it and social media real quick and then I'm going to go to Mel go to Howard and the Dassin will end Yes, my social media is at Libby D Music on Instagram and at Libby D Music official on TikTok. All right, Mel, go for it. Um, I would love anyone who's a little ragey and wants to get underneath of that or who likes to laugh, who loves their mamas, uh, to check us out at www.hotangrymom.com. Uh, we'll be screening at Holly Shorts on August the 16th in the T uh, TCL Chinese Theaters in Hollywood. Um, and we've been accepted into about 10 more festivals. So we're traveling all over the world. If you go to hotangrymom.com, you can see whatever is coming up next. We're also on social at Hot Angry Mom, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, so you can catch updates, uh, check in with us. We have some reviews and awards and, and beautiful things happening. So connect with us. We'd love to talk to you. Well, Howard, obviously I talk about you all the time because Dawson's going to get the last <laughs> word out of this. All right, so talk about you, Howard. And Howard, I know Howard, what, the, what Howard's schedule was. Talk about what room you're in, what you're wearing, and who you are for the audience. Uh, I'm Howard Wiggins, Howard Wiggins Facebook. I'm in the upstairs uh, art gallery hallway, I guess you would call it. And uh, I've got a music video coming up this weekend I'm going to be in uh, with uh, Christine Lucas, she's going to be with me in that video, and just uh, a lot of things going on. So enjoying life and having fun. And Livy, if uh, he's from Nashville, Tennessee, you're in Virginia. You had need a dancer or whatever. Howard, uh, his his nine second uh, music clip, which was what we usually show every other couple of Tuesdays, is at two hundred uh, two hundred five thousand views. Nine seconds, not like nine days. Nine seconds. So. Dustin, all right, you get the final word. Let's talk about why people should see The Way, why they should see Nine Day, and where it's going next. Thank you so much, Brian, for having me. Always a pleasure to be here. I will be back with a new project. Happy to share with you. So, uh, DastonKalili.com, you can see all the films I've made with links uh, to watch them. Uh, also, again, my name, Dasan Khalili, at Dasan Khalili Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you should watch my films because very simply, whether you like it or not, I promise you one thing. You will have an experience. 
because I make good films. I leave greatness in the laps of the gods, but you will have an experience. Thank you so much. I love that. There's that person attitude. You got you can't go wrong with that. You just can't. So all I can say, I want to thank everybody for this so you gotta see Hot Angry Mom. Follow them, subscribe, like. And as I always say this, Livy, same thing with you. Keep singing, keep singing to those mares out there. And so that's it. Uh, I can't wait to see you pretty soon. And uh, I love your work. I really love your work, what you're Thank doing. Congratulations on everything because it's not easy doing what you guys do. I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's why I admire what you guys do. And Howard, uh, so, all right. What were you wearing, Howard, before we go real quick? What were you wearing? Yeah. Uh, oh, we lost you. my hand on sideways. I got my new pearl necklace on, multicolored pearls, and <laughs> match the stripes in the shirt. <laughs> Howard is the fashionable person of movie reviews and more so I always say this have a good night tonight a better day tomorrow you see someone without a smile please give them one of yours because the world needs it I'm Brian Sebastian this is movie reviews and more and we will see you next Tuesday <laughs>